All right, we're going to look at a special case. Um, we've done problems like this before. Point P falls on the terminal side of angle theta. Evaluate the six trig functions. So I've got our, trig, our six trig functions here. Make them a little smaller. And, and we're going to do the same thing we did in the other videos. But watch what the there's something slightly odd about these problems. Got our quadrant set up. <clears throat> this says point P falls on the terminal side of angle theta. So the point 40 falls on the terminal side of, of angle theta. So the terminal side, again, remember is where we, we remember is where we end. So we start facing the positive x-axis direction here, and we rotate and it says that the terminal side, uh, that point 40 is on the terminal side. Well, 4, 0, if you notice, 4, 0 would just be right somewhere like right here. Hmm. So, so we set the picture up right for sure, right? It's, this is the point four zero. It falls in our terminal ray. So that means we must have rotated all the way around and we're back, or we didn't rotate at all, or we rotated around 10 times and we're here. But in any case, we rotated. Angle theta brought us here. Now, what is the problem here? Well, the problem is our definitions of sine, cosine, tangent, and the other ones. All depends on this. All depends on us looking at a triangle, right? How can you talk about opposite sides, adjacent sides, hypotenuse. How can you talk about those if we're not looking at a triangle? And we can't draw a triangle here because our point, right, it's not up in the first quadrant. We can't draw a triangle. Um, and so a lot of students may think, well, this doesn't have an answer. But actually it does. It has an answer. We just have to be a little bit uh, willing to adapt. And so up here, I'm going to draw a picture. And I think if you... If you can understand this picture, you'll understand that we can actually answer questions like this. So, let's pretend we are looking at a circle, and let's say that let's say that's my radius. And let's say this here is angle theta, so I rotated angle theta. That's my radius of my circle. And this is, you know, this is a point on the circle, right? It's a point, uh, it's a point in the Cartesian plane too, it's, so it has coordinates x comma y. So let's just say the this is just a generic picture. Well, we can talk about the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle theta using this picture, and you'll notice that if we do that, it's going to allow us to answer questions like these really easily. Oops. So, so how do we do that? Well, according to this picture, the sine of theta, and we'll just do the three big ones, the three main ones. The sine of theta is y over r opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is x over r. And the tangent of theta is y over x. Those are just from the definitions. So this is another way, a very useful way of viewing our trig functions. And the reason it's very useful is because you're getting your answers not necessarily in terms of opposite over hypotenuse. I mean, most of the, often that's what you can do and you can get away with it. But it, it doesn't help in these problems, um, the, that way of thinking of it. This way here, 
really helps when you're doing problems like this because if if I want to know the sine of this angle, of course, remember we, we, ro we rotated, we landed here. If I want to know the sine of that angle, then I can just note that that is the x coordinate, the 4. 0 is my y coordinate. And of course, we should have to talk about what the radius is. What's the radius? Well, the radius is just how far am I. Remember, the radius is always positive. How far am I from here to the point? Well, that's a distance of 4. And if we, if we use this way of viewing the problem, then sine is just y coordinate over r. But the y coordinate is 0, and r is 4. So the answer is 0 over 4, which is, of course, 0. And cosecant would be 4 over 0, reciprocal, but you can't divide by 0, so that is undefined. Cosine would be my x-coordinate over r, so it's the x-coordinate is 4, And r is 4. So my cosine is just 4 over 4, which is 1. And secant would just be the reciprocal, which is also 4 over 4. Also equals 1. Tangent is y over x, which is 0 over 4. And that's equal to 0. And cotangent would be 4 over 0. But that's undefined. Okay, so these are called problems where the they're called quadrantal angles. All it means is that the the angles land on one of the axes, not in a in any of the quadrants where you could draw a picture. To do those, um, there's there's a bunch of ways to to do problems like that, but I think this is a very useful way to do it. Think of the think of your definitions of sine and cosines in terms of the coordinates, the coordinates, and that'll help you. So like for this one here, the point zero negative two would be would bring me down. Bring me here. Okay, so my terminal ray must have been facing that direction, and the point zero two is on that terminal ray. And I, once again, we can't draw a triangle, but we can get our answers if we note that that's my x coordinate, that's my y coordinate. And r is just this distance here. How far are you from the origin? That's just 2. Remember, r is always positive. So sine is y over r. So it's negative 2 over 2 equals negative 1. So cosecant would be 2 over negative 2, which is also negative 1. Cosine would be x over r be 0 over 2, which is 0, and secant would be 2 over 0, which is undefined. Tangent is y over x, negative 2 divided by 0, which is undefined, and cotangent would be 0 over negative 2. Oh, well, that's not undefined. Fix that. That equals 0. Okay, so... We can answer those questions, all right? We can answer those questions. And if you, one thing we sh I want to point out that we'll talk about is you'll get your same answers regardless of what R is. So if, if R is 1, these problems are very easy. And just so just keep that in mind. If, if this is like the point 0, negative 1, and your, your radius happens to be the number 1, these problems become really, really easy for reasons we'll talk about later. But um, they're important problems. Students get very confused with them. I would try to incorporate this into your understanding of the trick functions.